So making line graphs are, um, are a tricky business and before we make you, you make your own line graphs, we want, I want you to be able to take a look at a line graph and see its characteristics and see what um, things are missing, what things could be improved upon, and when um, a line graph is used to mislead. Now take a look at this line graph and what it tells us. It's about the number of wins of a football team. So the Arkansas football team, obviously down here, and uh, they've been playing from 2000 to 2016, and somebody has recorded how many wins they have a year. And if I look at this graph, it looks fairly stable, right? It's got a f fairly flat pattern, flat trend. So you could maybe um, conclude that, well, their wins and losses haven't really changed over the years. But that's something that you need to be think carefully about before making statements like that. So let's take a look at the y-axis or the vertical axis. Um, notice that it starts at zero, goes up in 25, so it's nicely evenly spaced, up 25 each time, so that's, that's good. But there's a lot of this, extra, this open white space that's not used at all. So why is it there? How could we uh, re-graph this so that it would maybe give us different information? Do we need to even have the scale go up to 100? Couldn't we just go up to 25? And what would that look like? And what conclusions would we make from that graph? So to, let's take a look at this graph, regraphed as I said. So the original graph was zero to 100, so nothing has changed, the flat line pattern. If we look at the new graph here on the right, it is the same information. So for example, in 2000, it looks like they had about six wins. In 2000, that's about six wins. So every point represents the same data. The data hasn't changed, but the look of it has. And why? It's because this scale has changed. Which graph is more appropriate? Well, it really depends on what you're using the graph for. If you want to find details in the up and down trends, so for example, if you're a management in management and you want to know if a change in coaching staff has made a difference to the team, this would probably be the better choice of scale. If you want to show that uh, the team is doing consistently well and uh, you want to build a new stadium and you say, all right, you know what, it, we're always doing, we're always pretty, pretty strong and nothing has changed over the years so we can anticipate that that's going to continue, then this might be the better choice. So if you want to convince the reader of the graph that there is hardly any change, that would be the graph to choose. So it really depends the story that you want to tell. So here, there's a couple of things wrong with the with the scale with the with the um, sorry with the graph. Number one, it has no title, it has no units, so we don't really know what we're measuring. But besides that, this this the spacing is not even. It goes from zero to one, which is one jump, another, and then here it jumps to two, and here it jumps to four, and the next one to eight. So this spacing is not even. And that is not, not what you do on a linear graph. Now, up to now, all of the graphs that we have looked at have the vertical scale start at zero, just like our first graph here. We start at zero and we go, in this case, to 30, and we're measuring um, the global temperature from 1850 to 2005. And uh, that line looks very flat. So it, to me, I would conclude using that graph that temperatures aren't changing.
and there is no global warming. So this graph tells a story. But the changes to temperature on a global scale are in between 10 and 15 only. There's no change between 0 and 10, and there's nothing between 15 and 30. That's all that white space that we talked about earlier. So if I use the same data and replot it, but this time do not start at 0, but start at 13.5 and go up in nice 0.1 jumps. Notice the jumps are even, which is what we want, but they start at 13.5 and they go to 14.4. And here we can see the data is going up and down, but there's a general upward trend between 1860 and 2000. And so the temperature is increasing. So if you were a climate change denier, you might uh, choose this graph to sh show your, to tell your story. Um, but the more appropriate graph to measure temperature chain changes is on this one. So sometimes it's okay to start with number that's not zero on the y-axis. Now often you will see that as a little break like this. That means we didn't start at zero and we took a big jump and start at 160. The rest of the jumps are all evenly spaced but there was a big jump going from zero to 160 and that little zigzag line means that. So if here we're talking about the number of video rentals, um, it peaked in between 1986 and 1991, and then it fell dramatically. So this is obviously when the internet made videos more accessible, Netflix, that kind of thing, and it's sort of been steady and up and down a little bit, but fairly flat. So this graph right here doesn't start at zero necessarily. It starts at 160 and it's shown with that little zigzag line. And please feel free to use that if you are graphing linear plots um, in the lesson to come.